momentary lapse of judgment. Nailed it. Nailed it. <laughs> I nailed it in the first take. Wow. So the song is very playful while being mysterious. It, I think the vocals are talking about how the protagonist escaped and they have to run. And it maintains that vibe of a silly fun quest, but it's really varied with the, everything that happens. And in this track in particular, it adds like a mysterious tone of conflict. The sex track carries a sense of misfortune, deity on a sulfate. The tracks still dance around and some of the songs are like are jokey, playful, but it gets more mysterious and conflicted. In the same track, there is also something really special. There is a sense of mystery, but you are excited to, dis to discover that mystery. There is a sense of uncertainty, but it's a sense of uncertainty that you are not afraid of. You are excited to advance, and it's fantastic because the whimsical playfulness of the rest of the scenes only make you feel excited. It's like you are going through a maze and you are trying to find the exit. It's great, it's great, it's great! <laughs> the seventh track called It's Coming, a fanfare for the millennium. <laughs> it's a short interlude, and the trick in this song is how the harmony is unstable. It makes this in Cali Valley uh, and sings play a happy melody, but it sounds slightly out of tune to give you a sense of uneasiness. And it's really interesting what you can do, just change it a little bit the melody. It's like it feels uneasy, but you don't know exactly why. The ninth track called Crusier. It's, it's amorphous, weird, evolves in all sorts of weird passages and melodies. And it, it's not dissonant. If you think you will find a wall of noise, it won't be. But it sounds very puzzling. Puzz, puzzling and peculiar. Ten, the 10th ten track called Bowie Knife is Steve Cutter's Anonymous. Steve Cutter's Anonymous. I like that name. The 10th track continues back with a picturesque, humorous tone. But this time, there is some mysteriousness that expects you to leave you confused or conflicted with the melody. The track feels like if someone is telling you a whimsical riddle and you're trying to decipher it while you smile. The lyrics might refer to a heartbreak. It is about someone who wants the other person to twist their heart with a bowie knife. So, so yes, yeah, so if someone said me that, I were like, what? So it's really amazing what it does with the melody. The whole album is filled with all these moments of melodic genius. Every track has like a distinct, playful vibe, but it twisted, but it twist, it twisted, twist, twisted to tell something very unique every moment. The eleventh track called Seventy One BPM. It's very over top. It has this organ sound at the beginning and then it adds some super sauce. Then it adds like some super sauce, but since they're imposing this show and do, show and tunes kind of sound, the way they keep up with the melody just sounds uncanny, spectral and scary. I don't know if you noticed, but it's also genius, not in the way they create the melodies, but it how it uses the melodies. The 12th, track 12, it's it's easy the other way. Track 12, test X explosions between the six weasel. Wow, wow, I really like that. So what I really like about the music is the way they use this on resolve tension. If the tracks are happy, they don't sound completely happy. They have like a certain uncertainty to them, like there is something coming on and it will come back to bite you in the ass. But in this track, where the music is dark, ominous, it's not completely dark or ominous. There is something that says, okay, I'm in a bit of a pickle, but I think I can get out of this. And then at the middle of the song, it becomes playful as well. And it plays with that tension in a sense that's saying, come on, let's do it. The track 13, Mile Pretty. My old pretty teeth is one of the tracks that doesn't sound playful or whimsical. It's just nostalgic but spectative. There is, it's like a beautiful, it's like a very beautiful interlude or pause in the album. The four, the fourteen, the track fourteen, down and out in 
Halicolicopolis or conventional song number one. <laughs> it's, it starts with some bell sounds. There are some playful, playful scenes and maybe some cartoony melodies. It's as if it's showing you many strange things and unspeakable creatures and happenings around the world with a sense of wonder and enjoyment for them. It's like telling you, look at all these monsters, all these things that is happening in the world. How amazing is that? Wow, that is scary. What's that? What's that? Oh my God. The lyrics are telling you about this story of sorrow. It's saying, I have to tell you about this story of sorrow. But the music still has an energy to keep going. Keep going. The 15th track called Copper Tone, that song, outro. The piano, well... This piano, I thought it was pretty dramatic. It's not like fighting a boss battle, but escaping one. Last, if trying to reach to safety. Then it had some distorted scenes with white noise that had, that hits the sense of uncertain whimsicalness and teeth. It's completely paired in the mix. And the white noise stays, the whimsical scenes lives on the album. And, and the album ends. So overall thoughts, um, who will I recommend this album to and who I will not recommend this album to? Well, I mean, I think that with albums of this genre, the kind of people I will not recommend it to is very self-explanatory. People who don't like minimal synth, MIDI music or EV or other indie genres like bedroom pop, Itarnavi pop, uh, singer songwriter, lo-fi, slacker rock, and all stuff like that because if you are not a fan of those genres you will not be pleased with how the album sounds because it's very stripped down in production and the mixing maybe sometimes can sound disjointed or better for people who are not familiar with the genre genres like minimal synth never quietly achieved mainstream success but they have like an underground following because it all that kind of genres like it's Ipagnogic or it's bedroom pop or minimal synth, it sounds fundamentally different than what high budget, uh, big production sounds. So yeah, if you don't like that kind of sound of indie production, you will most likely not enjoy this record. Now, that does not mean it's not well mixed or it lacks production. Each sound feels like it has its own personality. I even feel that some of the scenes sometimes sound reminiscent of a med medieval toot, probably. There are sections where the voices have their own effects, panning. It is more a separate instrument per channel kind of thing, instead of a separating frequencies per channel kind of thing but it's there the weird soundscapes have their own noises and it's all well arranged in a way that you can expect from a minimal synth composition so who i do recommend it to we talk about who i will not recommend it to but who i will recommend it to the thing is that this album has a lot a lot to offer if you like whimsical playful music if you like that sense of adventure and wonder and like to see mystery and darkness this album is for you and the thing is that the whole album has a lot of brilliance with the melodies and harmonies alone what it does in every song it's fantastic if you like this kind of fun imaginative enthusiastic music that is a bit mischievous but also very creative and evocative this album is for you so the thing is that i really really like this record and it was pretty new in its own way so what about the rating um i thought about it a lot and i think uh, my rating for this record is Cheesecake. Yeah, cheesecake. Cheesecake? I mean, come on. Do you really like cheesecake? <laughs> so, yeah, I guess that's my review of Buzz Lerman. Yeah, a pretty unique record. It's not melodically difficult. It's not unapproachable or harsh in any way. It's very approachable. And it's just melodically brilliant in everything it does. So yeah, I, that's my review by now. And I hope that you have a great day. And I'll see you. Well, I mean, I will not see you. I cannot see you. But I guess I'll talk to you 
on the next one, on the next review, that I hope it comes out more soon the next time. We will get there, we will get there, we will get there when we get there, okay, right, all right? It's just, uh, uh, we, we are going at our own pace by now, so yeah. Goodbye. Goodbye. I don't know. I just feel like staying here. Uh, we, we're seeing each other. Well, I'm not saying you, but I don't know. I just feel like I feel the company, you know? I feel the company. I'm just here watching the air. The, oh. It's foggy again. It was kind of sunny at first, but still. Fine! Goodbye!